Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 31. This is going to be uh, probably uh, the end of Saul, King Saul. Uh, in John 8, 12, Jesus said this, uh, I am, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. And let's take a look. King James Bible, 1 Samuel, chapter 31. Now, in case you missed the other parts, uh, this is going to be, I guess, part 9 or 10, depending upon how you look at it. Uh, I did chapter 30, but that was about King David and Ziklag. So technically, it wasn't about King Saul, but this is about the end of King Saul and his sons, as was foretold by Samuel, the prophet, that was brought up by the witch of Endor. So, verse 1. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. Now remember, Goliath was one of the giants, and he was a Philistine. Verse 2. And the Philistines followed hard. They followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab and Malshishua, Saul's sons. Now remember, Jonathan was very, very close friends with David. Him and David were best, best of friends. So keep that in mind. David is not going to be happy here. Even though Saul's been chasing him around and wanting to kill him, David is not going to be happy about the whole affair. Verse 3. And the battle went sore against Saul. And the archers hid him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Archers, plural, hit him. So evidently, he was hit with a minimum of two arrows. Not good. Is there any good two places to be hit in your body with an, uh, a, a, an arrow? I don't think so. I mean, one's bad enough, but two? Then said Saul to his armor bearer, Draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. So, you know, Saul doesn't want people to say, Oh, well, the Philistines killed him. So better to say your armor bearer um, dispatched you. He didn't want to be abused, if you know what I mean. So would they torture him to death? I, I don't know. But maybe that's what he's thinking. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. Is this a good day for David? He doesn't have Saul chasing him around trying to kill him anymore? I don't think so. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, and they saw that they were on the other side, Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. Hey, look, everybody left the city, so uh, hey, look at this fruit tree. It's, uh, 
It's got fruit on it. You know, look at this garden. Oh, the house is swept and nice and clean. The bed's made. Hey, look, check this out, you know. Well, that's what happens. When you lose a battle, the enemy moves right in. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa, and they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth. And they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. What is the house of Ashtaroth? Well, there's a couple different competing theories here. Some say that Ashtaroth is a, depending upon how you spell it, is a male god, one of a trinity of gods, along with Baal and the devil, Satan, Lucifer. I don't know how true that is. Personally, I think Ashtaroth, from what I was reading, is uh, the goddess. Some call her Astarte. Uh, she has many names. The Queen of Heaven. Oh, yeah. The Queen of Heaven. Uh, Easter. Believe it or not, Easter is one of her names. Ishtar. Isis. Uh, she's got... A, the, the goddess has a lot of names. Matter of fact, uh, when you hear the Jews start talking about Shekinah, S-H-E, she, K-I-N-A-H, guess what they're talking about? The goddess. Yes. Of course, they'll try to tell you, oh, well, the Holy Spirit is the Shekinah, the glory of God. Well, they're actually talking about the queen of heaven, the goddess. They are. Take my word for it. Actually, don't. Look up Shekinah, Chabad, C-H-A-B-A-D, one word, next word, Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, and then say, what does she want? Click enter on Google. Take you to the Chabad Lubavitch site where it'll talk about the goddess. What does she want from our life? Yes, they say that the Holy Spirit is the goddess. Uh, let's, all right, let's finish up, uh, Samuel, and we're going to talk about Ashtaroth. Because we're almost done with, uh, this 1 Samuel 31. All right, so verse 9, and they cut off his head, Saul, and stripped off his armor and sent it into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among their people. Among the people, you know. Hey, look what we did to the king of Israel. We got his head. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtaroth. Uh, do you know how to spell Ashtaroth? A-S-H, Ash. And then T-A-R-O-T, -T, Tarot. You ever heard of Tarot cards? Tarot cards? Ash. Torah, T-A-R-O-H. Well, T-A-R-O-T-H. Uh, when you take a tarot card and you burn it, what do you have? Ash. Ash off. And they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard of what that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth 
Shashan, Beth Shan, and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. See, they were sad that Saul had died and his sons. Let's go read about the Queen of Heaven, Jeremiah chapter 7. Now, I don't know if you know it or not, but Jeremiah is, it's a depressing book. God's judgment upon his people for their wickedness. It says, you people want to serve Satan? I'll let you have Satan. No problem. Leave me out of this equation. Satan wants to kill you. So if you want to be his buddy, go for it. Jeremiah 7, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Oh, really? You're, you're going to put your uh, faith in the temple of the Lord? How about you better straighten up and fly right? Amend your ways. That's the Bob translation. Verse 5, For if ye thoroughly amend, amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, Neither walk after other gods to your hurt. You want to walk after the God of heaven? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Or do you want to walk after the God, the gods of this world? Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Up to you. Neither walk after the gods to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal? B-A-A-L. That's just a generic word for Lord. It became so associated with Satanism that God didn't even want him, that you, them to use that word to refer to him anymore. No. Will ye steal, murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal? And walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? So you're going to worship the devil one day, and then you're going to stand in the house of the Lord the next day and say, I'm guiltless? I don't think so. Verse 11. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Wow. Didn't Jesus say something about like that? I think he did. Yeah. Let's go to Matthew 21 where Jesus is getting ready to go into Jerusalem after 
Let's see. Yeah, he's getting ready to go to Jerusalem. Matthew 21, 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the temples of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Boy, I'll tell you what, you want to Make some people angry. The you-know-whos. Overthrow their tables of the money changers. Boy, I'll tell you what. I wish we, I wish we had somebody who would cast out the money changers in the uh, EU and USA. Uh, I guess that's not going to happen until the second coming. But And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Oh, yeah. Huh. Jeremiah 7, 11. Jeremiah 7, 11. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. Let's read 14 again. Therefore will I do unto this house which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Ephraim was the main tribe of Israel. They went into captivity in Assyria. Verse 16, listen to this. This is some harsh words. God is speaking to Jeremiah. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. What? Therefore, pray thou uh, I'm sorry, therefore pray not thou for this people. Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, 
for I will not hear thee. Do you Jew catch that? The Lord said, don't pray for this people. I'm not going to hear it. Don't pray for them. Don't cry. I don't try to make intercession. I'm not going to hear it. Don't you dare pray for this people. I've had it. That's uh, the Bob commentary there. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Listen to this. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. They're making cakes to the Queen of Heaven. The Shekinah which is catching on big time because churches listen to the you-know-whos instead of the Bible. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. You know who the Queen of Heaven is to the Catholic Church? Mary. Mary. But to the uh, Jays, it's uh, the Shekinah. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Does that sound like the Lord's happy? No. Verse 19. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing command I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Let me tell you something, people. You may not know this, but uh, there were virtually very, 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 very few old prophets. You know why? Because the people killed them. They didn't like the message, so they killed the messenger. Yeah. According to legend... Isaiah was cut in half. They stuck him inside a, an empty, a hollow log and cut him in two. I don't know how true that is, but uh, the Bible does record that they were sawn asunder. Not a very, uh, you know, <laughs> you didn't have a very long lifespan. If I remember correctly, The king of Israel had Jeremiah thrown into a, a, uh, a mud hole in a dungeon in the castle. Let me tell you something. You wouldn't live very long in a mud hole. Uh, 
you know, you know what the number one thing that caused casualties in World War One? That was everybody was fighting in the trenches. They would dig a hole, well, a trench, uh, uh, a connected canal like thing in so that uh, you couldn't easily shoot at people, you know. So it was like a, a long, long, long hole, miles long, trenches. Well, then it would rain and the thing would fill up with water and the people's feet would stay wet for days, weeks, months. People's feet would get uh, mold. Their toes would fall off, believe it or not. Uh, that was the number one cause of casualties during World War I. Wouldn't necessarily kill you, but uh, finally uh, there was a guy, his name was General Pershing. He told the quartermaster, the quartermaster was the guy that supplied everybody with uh, their things that they needed, clothes, food, ammunition, those kind of things. He gave the quartermaster a job. He says, you will supply my troops with clean, dry socks on a daily basis. And that helped tremendously. So to be thrown into a mud pit in a dungeon, in a castle, you would not live very long. Matter of fact, it said he sunk, I forget if he sunk up to his waist or to his chest. Uh, but, you know, Jeremiah knew he wasn't going to live very long. You know, you do that for a week. Your skin is not made to be wet for that kind of time period. It's just no. You know, it just wasn't good. Yeah, uh, Jeremiah 38, 6. Jeremiah's preaching. What did they do? Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of Hamelek, that was in the court of the prison, and let they let and they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Basically mud. No water, just mud. So back to Jeremiah seven twenty seven. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. See, the Lord knows. I'm going to give them a warning, but they're not going to listen. 28. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away. And take up a lamentation for high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. They were burning their children in the fire. Do you know that's what the actual word Holocaust means? A burnt offering. Horrible that they would do such a thing. And they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, 
neither came it into my heart. I didn't tell him to do this stuff. No way. Verse 32. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. You know why they're going to call it the valley of slaughter? Because the enemy is going to come and slaughter the Judah. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. They're going to be burying so many bodies there, it's going to be full. There's going to be no empty spots. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven. Oh yeah, the vultures are going to get a feast. And for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. That's right. They're not going to shoo the, uh, the beasts or the, the vultures away. There is nobody going to be alive to do it. They're all going to be dead. Vultures are going to have a free reign here. 30, verse 34. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. It's going to be empty. Queen of heaven, anybody? I don't think so. So when you hear Shekinah in a church, so-called, run, run, people, run. Matter of fact, the word Shekinah doesn't even appear in the Bible anywhere. It's a made-up word. Oh, they've got a word that's similar to that, but uh, yeah. I mean, the word S-H-E should be a dead giveaway. Hey, maybe, uh, yeah, they want to take the Holy Spirit, which is mentioned as a he, by the way, and turn it into a she. They want to transgender the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that makes sense, Chaplain Bob. They've been, haven't they been doing all this? Uh, yeah. I wonder if this Bible study is going to be the one that gets me on my third strike. Listen, everybody, PatriotsSoapbox.com. Patriots, plural, Soapbox.com. I plan on um, being there, God willing. So there really isn't anywhere else to go, people. So, all righty, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. To God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. Amen.